Today I'm gonna to take this old beaten up trailer and make it look like new. I found this thing on trusty old Facebook Marketplace. It was listed for $17.50, which I knew was overpriced and I knew I could talk him down. He ended up keeping the winch and I got the trailer for $1,400, which I was happy with. Now this is an 18 foot dovetail car hauler. In my area, if it's in really good shape, has a good deck, good tires, everything like that, you're looking at probably 2,500 to 2,700 is what I would think that trailer would go for. So that's probably gonna be my target range of what I would like to sell it at. First step is just to remove all these boards and wires, get the trailer completely stripped down to its frame. It's got some damage to the frame supports right there in the middle, and I didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal to fix that and bend that back since I have a tractor and a come along and all these other things that I thought it would surely be able to bend it back. But you'll see later, it was a lot harder than I thought, and I would probably advise to stay away from trailers that have major frame damage like that. Now that the boards are off, I just gotta get these wires for the lights out. The lights didn't work and the wires were really dry rotted. That's why I wasn't using them. Since the previous owner didn't have any boards in the middle, his winch hook caught that angle iron and bent it pretty severely. I feel like I did a decent job at straightening it out though. And of course, I will be honest with the buyer whenever I sell this trailer. Even though I don't think it affects the trailer in any way. The fender welds had broken loose, so I needed to prep the trailer for welding. No! Welding the fenders is not something you want to rush. You gotta take your time because if it burns too hot, you'll burn through your fenders. But if it burns too cold, then you won't penetrate the frame. Now the trailer is ready for a wash. I do two rounds of degreaser with a rinse in between, and I use a 3400 PSI pressure washer with a turbo tip. This will smooth any surface rust and it will remove any paint that's flaky. For round two, I'll use purple power at full strength. And I sped it up for the sake of time, but this took me at least three hours just to wash this trailer. Now I normally just use a primer that's meant for rusty metal, but I decided to give this rust reformer a shot. Let me know in the comments what you would use. And I know some people may be thinking that I should have removed all of this rust. But in my opinion, this is just surface rust. I've done this with other trailers that I've kept for years and they hold up just fine. And you have to keep in mind that I'm gonna be selling this trailer for half of the cost of a new one. It took me two and a half to three hours to paint the inside of this trailer. I did two coats of rust reformer 
and then I did three coats of high performance enamel. The outside of the trailer had been painted with a bed liner a couple years prior and it was actually holding up pretty well so I decided to redo it. I hit it with two coats of primer and then three cans of truck bed liner. After it all dried, I used one more can of truck bed liner on all the high use areas. And I know I need to get a paint sprayer. I'm going to in the spring. I promise you in the spring, I'm gonna get one. On all my other videos on trailers, everyone's like, you need a paint sprayer. For connections, I really like these solder connects. You just heat them up and that piece of metal in the middle will melt down and it creates a really, really good connection that's watertight. And it's probably overkill, but I like to throw some shrink wrap on them sometimes too. These trailer lights use a four-way plug, which means there's four wires. You've got your green, which is gonna be your right turn signal. You've got your brown, which is gonna be your running lights and amber lights. And then you have your left turn signal, which is gonna be the yellow wire. These wires will also be wrapped in electrical tape. Your amber and clearance lights typically have one wire that gets spliced into the brown wire going back to the tail lights. If it has two wires, one of the wires is probably white, which means it's ground. I had a problem when checking the lights though. The clearance lights were working great and the left tail light was working properly as well. But the right tail light was really dim and whenever I hit the brakes, it didn't work at all. After adjusting the ground, it fixed the problem immediately. Back from the hardware store with 13 pressure treated 2x8s. For some reason, the boards did not want to fit underneath the frame of the trailer. So I just trimmed the top and made them fit, but I'd really like to know what's going on here. Using a wedge to straighten the boards allows even gaps between each board so rainfall drains properly. The notches for the dovetail were harder to do, but it was really satisfying. And finally, I had to rip the last board to fit the gap. And it's done. I think it turned out pretty well and it sold within about a week and a half of posting it. If you enjoyed this video, you should check out my channel. I've got a couple other trailer videos and then I'll be posting new videos every month.